All right, everybody, welcome back to Digital Marketers Content Marketing Certification. My name is Russ Henneberry. I'm Director of Editorial at Digital Marketer, and we're excited to jump in to Lesson 2, Top of Funnel Content. All right, so let's take a look at our content lifecycle graphic, and along the top here is where we're focusing our attention in this lesson. We are going to be going through the goals, the content types and the metrics for top of funnel content. And this stage is critical, guys, because at the top of the funnel, remember, we're dealing with awareness, okay? And we're dealing with using content to raise awareness. You are talking to a very cold prospect at this point. They may not be aware that they have a problem. They may not be aware of your brand. They may not be available. Uh, they certainly are not uh, aware of the solution that you have available to them. So it's, we're dealing with a cold prospect. And this is so important because this is how your, your company is able to sort of widen the net at the top of the funnel and bring in more uh, cold prospects that you can then warm up through your content marketing and bring them down into the middle of the funnel and the bottom of the funnel where all the good stuff happens. All right. So, uh, we're going to jump right in and start talking about the different goals that you might be trying to meet at the top of the funnel. And if you're, in a, you're an, employee, uh, an employee of a company and, and, and your boss calls you in and they say, um, you know, I need this done, you might be looking at this chart to say, okay, what types of content marketing should I do? If, an, if you're an agency and a client needs uh, a particular outcome, um, you might be looking at uh, top of funnel content to get that done, but maybe it's middle of funnel content or, or bottom of funnel content that you need to be focused on for that particular goal. So we're going to be going through the different goals that can be met at the top of the funnel. So again, in our, in our uh, trusty content lifecycle graphic, in the upper left hand corner here, we are going to go through each of the goals. And those goals are um, increasing offer awareness, all right, so increasing offer awareness. If, you're, if your employer or your client or you for your business want to increase the number of people, like if you've ever said, wow, I just, I have this great product or this great service, if I could just get it out there, if people could just know about it, um, that's an indication that you need top of funnel offer awareness. All right, growing retargeting lists. This is something that we'll revisit throughout the certification because at all stages of the, uh, of the uh, content life cycle, we are looking to grow retargeting lists. This is a very important part of how we approach content marketing. And we'll get into, if you don't know what retargeting is, you will by the end of this certification. If you want to increase engagement, like if, if you're, uh, you're here, you're you for your business or your employer or your client or whatever is saying, hey, no one retweets our stuff, right? No one ever shares our stuff on Facebook. None of this ever happens. You might be looking at top of funnel, all right, as, as where you need to begin your uh, plan of attack. If your client or you're trying to do for your business, if you're trying to grow website traffic, okay, so you want more traffic to the site, you're at the top of the funnel. And then anything else, right? Now, you know, as you learn this system for content marketing, you might find that there are other things that for your particular business could fit into a top of funnel goal. So let's take a, look, a quick look at examples of what we mean by all of these things, just to kind of drive the point home before we move on to the next section. So when we talk about increasing offer awareness, what we're talking about is people becoming more aware of the things that you sell. Okay, so if you have a product or a service and your company can use content to get that out there in, in, in front of people that previously did not know you offered that. And you'll see that when uh, people go in and they type in the name of your product or service into the, the Google search engine. Um, you'll also see the, an increase in the number of new visits that come to your site. You should see new blood uh, entering your site in your analytics. In terms of growing retargeting lists, so just a brief sec, a second here, I'm going to be talking about retargeting before we uh, uh, talk about it in more depth later on. But 
If you take a look at how CNN um, is, is running this ad here for Vimeo in the upper right hand corner, you see an ad on CNN.com for Vimeo and that's a retargeting ad. So I'm seeing that because I was on Vimeo's website. So if you've ever seen these ads that seem to follow you around the web, um, they are actually following you around the web. They are following you based off of activity that you've done prior. So usually the visiting of a web page. So if I visit uh, Vimeo.com and then I exit and I go to a publisher like CNN just to read about something in the news, um, I'm going to see a relevant ad because they know that I was just on their site and that I might still be interested in clicking back over and, and getting their service. So that's kind of how retargeting works in a nutshell. We'll talk about it in more detail as we move along. But you can see here that, you know, this is just an example, this slide of the different retargeting lists that we have uh, here at, at Digital Marketer. We'll, we'll, we'll get into, you know, why we have these lists and how you can apply this same principle. But you can see that this is a form of owned media. You know, it's a sort of a hybrid, of course. Uh, we don't actually own these lists, but this is a screenshot from the inside of Facebook, okay, where um, along the right side of this graph, you can see, uh, for example, 230,200 people in this custom audience here, which is we have the ability to retarget or show ads to 230,000 uh, people based on the fact that they visited this page. All right, so they, they visited our Black Friday boot camp which was a webinar. We know they are interested in a certain thing, so we we're able to retarget that group of people. All right, and you can see, and like I said, we'll, we'll get more and more into how to use content and retargeting to really move people through funnels fast um, as we move along. Now, another thing you might be trying to do as a goal at the top of the funnel is increase engagement, right? So you want more retweets and you want more Facebook shares and you want people on LinkedIn to share your stuff. Um, you might want more sessions or page views or you want that average session duration to be longer, people to stay on the site longer. If that's the case, then you're at the top of the funnel and you can see things in these kinds of metrics like bounce rate in pages per session uh, or looking at your content and seeing that you know you're seeing lots of social shares and comments and things like that those are top of funnel metrics the one thing I would say about engagement metrics is you got to be careful that you don't you should be measuring those things if you're creating great content and you're building an audience you should see more social shares. You should see less bounce rate and, and more people uh, diving deeper and deeper into your site. So your pages per session should go up. But don't base all of your decisions on, you know, a lot of people stop right there. That's the only metrics that they measure with their content strategy is how many people are commenting, how many people are sharing, you know, what is our bounce rate. Those are, those are metrics you should be measuring but some people will call them vanity metrics, right? They're metrics that um, don't mean a whole heck of a lot, but um, you know, are easy to measure. And um, just be careful, and we'll talk, you know, this, this program is all about finding better goals and better metrics than just how many tweets did we get. And earlier in the certification, we talked about how executives and business owners and clients, they care about revenue, all right? They might be asking you how many tweets did we get, but what they're really saying is, how is this affecting my business, all right? And so you gotta go deeper than engagement metrics like this. Same with traffic. Traffic is really kind of a vanity metric as well. How much raw traffic did we get? Um, but if you're running your content strategy correctly at the top of the funnel, you should see an increase in website traffic and you will see an in increase in website traffic. So you should be looking at things like your website traffic and in, in your analytics program. But again, don't pin everything to whether your traffic is going up or not. All right. This is really about driving the business objectives, revenue and costs. 
All right, now in the next video, we're gonna be going through the different types of content that you could create at the top of the funnel to meet these goals. We'll see you there.